good morning, everyone. And uh, welcome along to dear St. Andrews, those that are here, also those joining us online and whether they're watching a normal channel or the deaf stream, you're all very, very welcome indeed to come to this uh, service for the third Sunday in Advent. Just a few things to pick out before we begin our worship, just from the sheets which were handed out or the words have been on the screen. Uh, first of all, the funeral tomorrow of Helen Smith, Helen of Kergrieve Court, died. We announced that last week, I think. And Helen's funeral is tomorrow, tomorrow here at 1 p.m. There after the Cambus Nethan Cemetery. So do please remember William, her husband, and the family in your prayers. Kirk Matters is on the stage for those that kindly helped to deliver the Kirk Matters. It's an absolutely smashing Christmas edition waiting on the tables on the stage. Please pick them up afterwards. Uh, the Christmas fair, uh, the, there's an update. A, good, a few hundred pounds more came in and some gift aid money, and that's intimated there. Um, getting on for £2,800 there, and there's some other sums as well. So a tremendous effort all around from those that helped at the Christmas fair. Next Sunday, um, in fact, you better not go home because there'll be a queue at the door next Sunday. Next Sunday is the Nativity presentation by our Sunday school. So uh, we look forward to that very, very much indeed. Do come early. It's always such a very, very special occasion. The Sunday school will not be coming in today. They'll be there continuing the rehearsals for next Sunday morning. If you hear a great noise, it's because the crash are having their Christmas party. <laughs> so if I disappear out, it's only to get a wee hot sausage. They look absolutely delicious, absolutely wonderful. They've got great stuff there. The Christmas Eve services are all there as usual. You'll see them. 6.30, the young parents in our congregation are uh, holding the 6.30 family service, which is smashing. Tea and coffee in the hall afterwards. Um, 10.45 for, again, some more teas, coffees, mince pies, followed at 11.30 by Reverend E. McKenzie, who's taking our watch night service. And then on Christmas morning at 11 o'clock, Murdo MacDonald, our interim moderator, is flying into Motherwell. He's flying because he's got his own service at 10 o'clock. <laughs> but he says it only takes half an hour, and he reckons he can be here in, before 11 o'clock. So a tremendous am the amount of activity and a great excitement, as always, at our Advent season. We do come together, though, to worship God. That's our aim. And I read, again, from Isaiah, these wonderful words. For those that have enjoyed Handel's Messiah, there will be a ring to this, and it takes us back 700 years before Christ was born. So let's just have a few words from Isaiah chapter 40. Right from the beginning, where the prophet says, Comfort, comfort my people, <coughs> says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the wilderness Prepare the way for the Lord. Make way for Christmas. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low, and the rough ground shall become level. The rugged places are plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. I have privilege to join together as we sing our opening praise. See in yonder manger low, born for us on earth below.
this our third Sunday in Advent, and traditionally the church normally remembers this as the church as the Sunday for the coming of John the Baptist, the great messenger from Christ. Also those messengers in our own day, ministers, but also all who proclaim Christ, and that includes, of course, our Sunday school teachers and our crash leaders, all those who are putting Christ into the lives, letting them know about our Saviour. So as we light the third candle in our Advent wreath this morning, we dedicate that and the third Sunday in Advent to the messengers who bring the good news. Let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. Raise up in your church, O Lord, men and women of faith and vision for the work of the ministry. Be with all, yes, all who teach and all who learn in our colleges, that the church may be furnished with ministers who are filled with your spirit and devoted to your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we praise you for the hope joy and peace of this Advent season with which you fill our lives and overflow our days. We live in a rapidly changing world. Every day the things we have taken, long taken for granted are questioned. The assumptions we had made are undermined and those on which we had relied are being washed away in the flood tide of progress. Again and again we are reminded of our human frailty, our mortality and the fickleness of human nature. Each day and in every twist and turn of life, we discover that nothing and no one can be trust com trusted completely other than you. We praise you for your presence and we praise you for Jesus, for his life, death and resurrection, and for the assurance that he is the solid rock on which we can build our lives in confidence. That in the midst of the chaos we call life, he is forever the same, in the midst of our unreliability, Christ stands firm as our unchanging saviour. In the midst of our confusion and disillusionment, Christ remains our unchangeable living Lord. So we praise you for Jesus Christ, the one through whom we have confidence to enter your presence. That he lifts us when we fall, holds us when we're hurting, Loves us, yes, even when we are in the wrong. We praise you for making us to be your special possession. We praise you more that being your people does not depend at all on our goodness, our worthiness, or even on our usefulness, but solely depends on Christ, the King of glory and the head of the church. Lord, we bring our praises in name of our changeless Saviour, Jesus, our Lord. Graham Kendrick is one of the great worship leaders, songwriters, teachers of our times, very prolific. Hymns we now regularly sing in worship, Shine, Jesus, Shine, The Servant King, Knowing You, Jesus, Meekness and Majesty, God of the Poor, Beauty for Brokenness, All I Once Held Dear, many, many more songs that are now very much part of our worship. Make Way for Christmas, the gift. There's a particular section that Graham wrote 30 years ago, 1988, very popular on YouTube. It's to be seen thousands and thousands of views on YouTube. We don't need to wait for that because our choir are going to present today with your involvement, Make Way for Christmas the Gift, as written by Graham Kendrick. We're blessed, mightily blessed, that we're allowed and able to join together in singing this very, very special presentation. So, Without further ado, I'll introduce Linda Simpson, who's going to read in a little while. But first of all, over to Eric to begin Make Way for Christmas. Oh, 
and give your life that we might live. This is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily
Welcome to the celebration. Welcome to the greatest birthday party of all time. We are celebrating the birth of a child whose coming changed the whole course of human history and who has changed our lives too. Though his arrival was almost unnoticed, his birth had been prophesied centuries before when the prophet Isaiah said, For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and he will be our ruler. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Let's <laughs> celebrate together this most joyful of all birthdays, the birthday of Jesus, the Child from Heaven. Peace and goodwill to the world. 
and heaven is still bursting at the seams with good gifts for everyone. So open your heart to receive what God has stored up for you, especially the greatest gift of all. Peace to you. 
to God together. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the peace that comes through your gift of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Thank you that although he was in very nature God, he made himself as nothing, took on the nature of a servant, was made in human likeness, and experienced the pain and suffering of a sinful world. Thank you that, in order to give us life, he humbled himself and surrendered to death, even death on a cross.
Eric has gone into that over these last few weeks. Eric wouldn't allow folk home before midnight at choir <laughs> practice time. An amazing, amazing talent and amazing skill. How mightily blessed we are indeed. Thanks also to Linda for her narration and her nice prayer right in the middle of all of that. Join with me in another huge round of thanks to our Director of Music, our choir and our narrator. Well done. And now we gather together our offerings for the work of the Lord. Our offerings will be received. Where there is love, the heart is light. Where there is love, the day is bright. Where there is love, there is a song to help when things are going wrong. Where there is love, there is a smile to make all things seem more worthwhile. Where there is love, there is quiet peace, a tranquil place where turmoil cease. Love changes darkness into light and makes the heart take wingless flight. Oh, blessed are they who walk in love. They also walk with God above. And when we walk with God again, there shall indeed be peace on earth for men. Father God, our Advent season heralds a time of love, the greatest gift of love, the gift of your own Son, Jesus, sent to earth so that, so that we may live, in the words of the songs we've just heard, so that we may live forever. Accept these our money gifts which we dedicate to you. Lord, we pray for all those who do not find this Advent season quite so enjoyable. We do know that there's uncertainty for many as the new year approaches, whether it's in employment, perhaps in health. We do know that for some, the time of Advent brings forward times of sadness, perhaps in memory of someone no longer with us. Let's not forget all of these two as we celebrate at this time. We remember the needs of the exploited, the hungry, the despairing throughout this world where there continues to be so much turmoil and sadness. 
Lord, we do pray to you for those who govern over us, particularly at this time of great turmoil in the political world. May they be given insight and courage. We pray for our Queen and members of the Royal Household. We pray for those nearer to us, those who are sick, perhaps at home or in hospital, for carers. We pray also for the bereaved, and we think especially today of the family of Helen Smith, for William and the wider family circle at this time. May your always, always, always presence, which brings great comfort, be with them at this challenging time for them. At this time, when we dedicate the third Sunday in Advent and we think of those who minister to us, we do bless the church and its ministers, its people, all of its office bearers. Give them great encouragement in their work. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for all the people, great and humble, who have maintained the fabric of the world's, <coughs> world's life in the past <coughs> and left us such a great inheritance. We pray that we may be counted worthy to share with them the life of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you, Father, and the Holy Spirit, in the majesty of the undivided Trinity, be dominion and praise forever. Thank you all very much indeed for joining with us. And remember, please, there is the opportunity for tea and coffee and some cakes in the hall. Let's join together then as we draw our service to a conclusion by singing our final hymn, Stand and Sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. So rejoicing in the wonderful sounds, the lovely songs, the great music of Christmas, let us make way for Christmas. That celebration once more of our Saviour's birth. May we always, always be thrilled by this so special season. And the blessing of God Almighty as Father, as Son, as Holy Spirit be with each one of you and all whom you love, today and forevermore.